Welcome everybody travel about. We are here today in Sholo, Arizona. We're going to go in and visit the Sholo Historical Museum. Yeah, this is a, uh, supposed to be a free museum. Um, of course they do. Well, of course we'll ask for donations. But uh, let's go on in and uh, let's hopefully, hopefully they'll let me film. Well, we can film, so we will. Uh, there are 17 rooms here. Uh, she told us that this used to be the, uh, the courthouse, uh, it used to be the jail. We're going to walk over towards the jail here in a minute. And we're, they've labeled them all off for us. So we're in room number one. And they gave us this cool little brochure with 17 different descriptions. So I'm going to uh, not read you all of this because that's long and boring for you. And I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of all 17 rooms. But I'll be spending a little more time in them than you will be. So if you want to see more, Sholo, Arizona, be prepared to climb a hill because we're 6,500 feet up. So it's not like the rest of Arizona around here. They actually get snow and it's a little overcast and it looks like it's going to rain today. You wouldn't see that uh, two hours from here. Anyway, I'm going to take you room to room. All right, now some of you youngsters out there may not know what you're looking at. And some of you know exactly what you're looking at. This is a switchboard. This is the uh, actual switchboard that was used here in this town. It was installed in 1961. Yeah, I've had so many clocks similar to that. Um, but anyway, let's look at the switchboard. This is pretty cool. So... This is awesome, man. Look at that's a timing device. Now that I've never seen. So I guess they would time the calls over here. Yep, you're not supposed to touch anything. There she is, that's the lady working on it right there. And you just pull these out and I don't know, she knew what to do. It looks like she would dial, you would call in and say, give me, you know, back then you have short numbers like uh, W32 or something. She would just bring it up for you and plug it in and, and uh, most likely she was listening to your call. That is pretty cool to be that close to a, an actual switchboard. Another place you might uh, see one of these if you like to watch the Waltons. Uh, the young Walton daughter uh, worked as a switchboard operator for almost a whole season if I recall. Yes, I have owned one of those. I've owned these. I've owned all of these. I used to buy and sell antiques, y'all. So it's... It's cool to see what other people have. Huh, yeah, I've had that exact box. Really? I sure have. Nice, look at the quilt. Different families. Here's, uh, okay, this is from there. They have a gem and mineral club here in Cholo. This is some things they found. Fossils, corals. Well, wow, a little bit of everything. Petrified wood right there. I always like petrified wood. And uh, we've got an accordion. A reed organ. Hmm, I'd like to see that cover off of that. And over here, probably just a piano. I'm not sure. The covers are closed. I'm not going to open them. Leslie, does this look familiar? Wooden folding chairs. We have almost on the exact same bench. Yeah. It's almost identical to this. Ours were in better shape. I actually gave them to the folks who purchased our home in Virginia. We put them on the front porch for them. I picked those up at an auction. Uh, where was that? Palatan. Yep. Had to do battle for them. Everybody wanted them, but I won. I'll show you. Hey, I almost forgot to film this for you. Uh, room number two is uh, basically a war memorial for people in the area or from Sholo or, or related to something in Sholo. And uh, we've got some um, World War II uniforms, Vietnam, some medals, some swords. Uh, just, you know, you know what I'm talking about here. Look at this guy, man, this was amazing. 1930 
to 19 to 2013 rear admiral mm, and that's the man right there that's him something that's a lot of service this gentleman up here this is newlywed picture uh, he, he passed away in Vietnam got killed and uh, these are some of his medals including that one you know what that is all right guys that's room number two we got a lot more to go room number three is a sporting goods store a and a sporting goods store they built the store in the 60s and this room is a recreation of the items that would have been in the store at the time cola cooler yeah not coca-cola nope. just cola 1958 Cub Lake and Wagon Wheel. So a lot of locals, they're probably in that picture. Yeah, sporting goods store in that time frame. This would have been a, a hot spot, I can tell you. So we got a lot of fishing equipment and uh, sporting goods, camping, uh, bullets, bows and arrows, Got a rifle up here, a 4570 carbine cartridge. And this is a Remington bolt action rifle found near, found in the forest hanging in a tree near Sholo. That is an old one. That is an old one. What? Yeah, I got the fish. And uh, we've got a fox down here, taxidermy. Fox. He looks a little mean. Got a pheasant. And uh, wow, you want to see some skis? Look at these crazy things. It's like, it's like a tree trunk with this metal thing shoved on your foot. An antelope up there. Uh, so we are in number three. We're heading into number four. Number four is the rodeo. She, she disky fire. The fire was human caused, beginning in 2002, burned for four months, and smoldered for three more months. It was the fourth largest fire in the United States at the time. And uh, these are some things about the fire. And uh, holy cow, look at that picture. That is a big fire, guys. Got evacuation orders for the city of Sholo right there. Some firemen's uniforms. Here's a good picture. It looks like a plane flew over it. That's a pretty good picture there. Ooh, okay. Big fire. Crazy. Man-made. Stupid people who don't know how to build a campfire or put one out. Just walk away. No. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm looking... Pretty sure this is George Bush right here. So he got involved somehow in this. Fires there. Yeah. Close. I guess that's a good overall picture. So here's Sherlock where we are. And um, the rodeo fire and the Chadisky fire up there. <laughs> it's like it's like the entire area, guys. There it is. Days and acres and burned. I'll just let you look at that. All right, we're moving on to room number five, which is E.B. Lewis room. And again, I'm not gonna go through every single thing here, but uh, we're just gonna kind of walk around for you. E.B. Lewis. E.B. Lewis was the owner of the Cash and Carry Antique Store located right out in front of us here on the Deuce of Clubs. That's the name of a street. So they gave a room dedicated to him. <laughs> 
Cash and carry furniture. Best junk in Arizona. <laughs> you always gotta like somebody who has a sense of humor on their on their signage, right? So anyway, this is more of a personal memorial to this guy. He, he must have been a, yeah, you can see him right there. He was a character, you can just tell. He was a character. Here he is, a little, little older. There he is holding a pig. <laughs> yeah, I knew he was a character, I could tell. Oh, and he's a clown, for real. Rodeo clown. Wow, look at this taxidermy. This is a lion. If you don't like it, look away. This is a lion. Taxidermy made into a rug, mounted on the wall. We're coming around. So he was quite the hunter as well. And I'm walking around a cannon, if you didn't notice. Oh yeah, looks like it's been fired. Anyway, we're going on to room number six. The Woodland, nope, the Wolford family. What's in this room? What room are we in? It's a hallway. I don't think this is a room. Wow, somebody had a bolo tie collection, look at this. Native American, we've got knives down here. Um, anyway, we're just going to keep wandering around here. Number six, there we go. The Wolford family room. Wow. There's a dress collar. It was actually on the lady's dress. This is some old stuff here, guys. Similar to what she was wearing here. Yep, very close to it. Sarah Wolford. Okay, who the heck was Sarah Wolford? George and Lily Wolford, who was Sarah? Were an important link in the early days of Sherlow. They operated the ACMI store. I don't know what that is. George was a sheriff and the justice of the peace. He was a carpenter and a dentist. She ran a motel and a cafe. The descendants are still a viable part of this community. There they are in 1909. Pretty well dressed for 1909, wouldn't you say? There he is as a sheriff a little later on in life. No, no, that picture, I'm sorry, was a justice of the peace. But he it said he was a sheriff too. Oh, nice, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Sorry, I like everything old. This is a washing machine, in case you didn't quite figure that out. Wow, this is a Maytag washing machine. It's old soap powder. Old stainless steel tub. There was some hand washing in there. This was made in 1935, this uh, dresser. We got a silver tone phonograph here. It's a box. Very ornate box. Got some fake pancakes and some fake eggs. I'm not sure what that was. For. Oh, okay, because she worked in the uh, cafe, so there. It's cafe stuff, I got it. Here's her wedding dress. We got a quilt on the wall. A Wilson rotary sewing machine. I may have never seen one of these. And there's another sewing machine in this cabinet, but I can't see what it is. All right guys, we're moving on to number seven, which is an artifacts gallery. Found it. Look at this. I believe that is real. What are we looking at here? There's no 
tag or name or anything on that one. Darn, everything is so well labeled. Well, I think it has to do with the patchy sunrise ceremony. Yeah. Oh, well, we have just entered uh, Native American land. It's looking for the right word. Where are we? Artifacts Gallery in memory of Shorty Reed Head, who gifted his personal collections of artifacts and Navajo rugs to the museum. So, um, don't quote me on this, but I'm assuming most of this is Navajo. But I don't know, unless they tell me. Well, these are Hopi. A lot of Hopi Indians around where we are here. We got pottery shards, we got actual pottery. The uh, thing that pottery is sitting on down there is a Navajo rug, the real deal. Anyway, again, brief overview. Just cannot, look at all the arrowheads, just cannot show you everything. This place is huge. We'll stop right there. We're in room number eight, the McNary room. Uh, this is um, just stuff associated with that family. We got a little bit of everything here. Logging, uh, pulp, there it is, McNary, uh, pulp wood yards. Okay, so that's what he used to do. Uh, we got some train stuff, switches. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yep, this is uh, one of, this is his, McNary. I guess he had a barbershop too. Yeah, I think back in the early days, people did a lot of stuff, multiple things. These are printing blocks. They turned the other way, so you can't really see the other side of them. Guest books. Southwest Forest Industries Guest House. 5,000 square foot house became the guest house for Southwest Forest Industries. Man, this guy did okay off for himself, didn't he? I think that's his property. I'd say he did very well. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're in the hallway and we're heading over to room number nine. Pioneer women. Oh, that ought to be a good one. Ooh, coming up as a post office? I'm not going to ruin it for you. There's some good stuff coming up, y'all. Number nine, pioneer women, women room. I'm just going to start here and do a 360 for you real quick. These are quilts. That's Leslie. She's a pioneer woman. There you go. Uh, let's get a close up of this for you. That's a very small wheel. Uh, we recently sold, uh, my partner and I sold a really large one of these. Another rotary sewing machine. Some glasses. Some hair things. Some attachments for stuff sewing machines. Oh, the old pencil sharpener. <laughs> Look at that thing. Oh, man. I think we actually had one of those in the desk. Yeah. Just like that. Hey, you know what? They work. It's 1940 1950 blue formal. Uh, worn by Peggy Butler right here in Sholo. Look at this. I think 1940 through 1950. That would be quite the event to have purchased that, probably very expensive in the day, and then gone to some event that was worthy of wearing it. Pale green dress made for somebody in 1937. She was 17 and queen of the ball. So this is her 17, queen of the ball. This is what she wore in her head. Awesome. Uh, I don't understand what I'm reading here, but it says black velvet dress worn by Lone Rogers Pierce, 1930. She was a, that was her name, Lone. <laughs> Lone was her name. Um, area school teacher for 40 years. Yeah, this looks like something school teacher would wear. Check out them boots. 
That's a school teacher boot, if I've ever seen one. Anyway, we are trucking on to room number 10. I've lost my map. Room 10 is the post office. Oh boy. You know, when you're in my old world, the antique world, this is something you really looked for and you never found. You could find these, the doors. I bought several doors. Very difficult to find the entire piece. Almost impossible. I probably only saw a small one one time. And we got two of them here. Because this probably was the actual pieces from the Sholo Post Office. Oh, oh, it's closed off. All right, well, you know what? We can stick our camera around there and look. Hello, may I help you? You got a package? We got some, uh, some plates. Pictures of the post office on the wall here. Anyway, I'm not going to show you everything. We are moving on to number 11, which is the blacksmith shop. That's 13. Uh, we got to go this way. So I'll just let you know that um, between the rooms, there's all of these hallways. And some stuff is labeled and some stuff is not. So they have filled every square inch of this place with something you know like like this is rescue department stuff here and things like that all right one of my favorite well, i don't want to say one of my favorite rooms but um very interesting to me this blacksmith stuff we've gone to several places in the past where they actually had replicas of blacksmith shops and they would be in there working and where was that place we went they were making nails that day they were making nails that's all they were doing men and women in in costume but they were actual blacksmith trained and they were at a forge and you could walk right up to it i mean literally almost stick your hand in the forge if you were dumb enough to do it and uh, watch them and they were making nails it was in waynesboro stanton it was in stanton Surveyor's instruments. Anyway, quick overview once again. There he is. That's how you do it right there. Just beat stuff on an anvil. Mm -hmm. That's one of the anvils. That's the real deal, y'all. That's the actual one. This is the forge bellows. They would blow air into the forge. And uh, the one that we were at, which is not here, did not have a hand crank. They were foot they were doing like this to the bellows. And I mean, we'll tell you what, they would get that thing white hot. White hot. All right. Very cool. Very cool. We're moving on to um, the Borago Kitchen. Uh, common cooking and washing items found in the homes during the late 1800s and early 1900s. Oh, this is going to be good. U.S. Navy 1931. When I was in the Navy, we called this a pea coat. That's probably what they called it. Crazy, heavy, wool, itchy, scratchy, horrible thing to wear. <laughs> All right, so this is not this is not a kitchen. This is a uh, kitchens from various homes in the area. Uh, remember that washing machine we saw early, earlier? Well, there's an even older one. This is early 1900s. Power washing machine. Power washing machine. I'm trying to figure out where the power part is. There, right there. There's a motor right there. So maybe only the ringer was powered here. It appears that only the ringer may have been powered. So you probably washed by hand. Well, I might be wrong. It's a little hard to tell. I don't think all the parts are there. Pretty awesome. Okay, this is a stove. I'm going to back up so you can really see this. Wow.
One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a six burner stove, y'all. I think that would be for probably just warming up there, most likely. One heck of an exhaust on this thing. I bet you would fire this thing up in the morning and it would probably still have hot coals in it in the evening. That's big. All right, this is what they call an ice box. This is probably the biggest ice box I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of them. This is something. This is something to see. Uh, so this has all been painted up. This would have not been painted in the day. This is tin. And uh, it's a little different than what I've seen. I don't actually know where they would have put the ice. I think this has been modified slightly, possibly. My dad would probably know. Usually they bring the big giant chunk of ice in and they throw it in the bottom. There's the ice tongue. So possibly they put the ice on the top, which wouldn't really make any sense because it would melt. But on the other hand, this one is solid. So I think they were putting the block of ice on the top on this one. And then they probably just had a tray that long gone now that would have caught the uh, drip, 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 drip. i tell you what. Back in these days, he was probably considered very wealthy if you had something like that. Because most people would probably just throw their food over in the creek somewhere to keep it cold. All right, I know I'm using a lot of film up here. Uh, we're going to the jail, guys. Let's go to jail. Oh, and by the way, this is the actual jail that for Sholo back in the day. It's not, not jail anymore, but the, this was the jailhouse. And a lot of what you're seeing is still here. This is where they would have arrested people. I got my fingerprints right there. In case I ever show up here again. These are uh, equipment used by the detectives and the police. This is where they would handcuff the prisoners. Still some handcuffs here. Handcuff the prisoners to this rail and this bench as they were checking them in. Um, oh, look at that. This is the actual jail. They left it intact. Good for them. Huh, scared me. <laughs> Probably scares everybody. <laughs> they put a dummy up on the top. <laughs> so they got three bunks. There's your toilet. There's your sink. And here's your bars. Let me out! Let me out! I'm innocent! <laughs> They're all innocent, aren't they? Awesome. Uh, we are off to the uh, Sholo room. Returning to the Sholo room. Oh, this is where we started. Got some steps here. And we're going to head over to the Whipple family. Which is over here. Now we're going to the other side of the building. Okay, guys, just quick, quick circle here for Whipples, and then I'm going to take some time to really investigate this. We're in room 14, I believe this. Nope, we're in room 15. This is called Early Sholo Old Business Room. So there's just uh, from various businesses, um, nickel plated cash register 1893. This would have been used in that ACMI cash store. Rewind a little bit and you, where I mentioned that. Whoa. Why don't anything we make today, why, why is nothing we make today like a work of art? Drive-in theater speakers. Yeah, drive-in theater speakers. I, I remember these as a kid. All right, this is an American business computer. The first business computer used in Sholo, owned by the bank. This is the computer disc, or the tape. And this is the disc. Oh no, I'm not supposed to touch it. There's my hand. So you've probably heard of a three and a half inch and a five and a quarter inch floppy. <laughs> I don't know. It must be 13 inches. Wow. And I'm going to show you how big this is. This is the computer, you know, the, the whole box down here. The whole case down there is the computer. And it probably was crazy slow. 
Okay, we've got a little more modern of a cash register there. That's a 50s. Some typewriters, some adding machines. Got another one here. Um, don't see a date on that one. Uh, this was actually used in the 70s and 80s at the Basket House Bar. Some beer signs. Basket House Bar sign. Oops. Bill's bar is up in flames. Sorry. Sorry, Bill. There it is. Bill's bar with a horse parked out front. It burned down. Early show low. Shoe stores. Okay, just a little bit of everything here. We're going over to number 16. Hang tight. I gotta change. I gotta flip the page. McNeil Stratton families. So, uh... Heritage items from some early pioneer families in the area. Pretty cool to see this stuff again. I'm just going to give you a quick quick overview. Oh, I see something cool. We're going to zoom in on the saddle. Ben McNeil rode the saddle to, to Colonial Morales, Old Mexico, to be married in 1900. Then he gave the saddle to his son in 1935, and then he gave it to his son in 1964. Well worn saddle, but I tell you what, it looks like it's in such good shape. You could probably use this saddle again. Little worn, patched up here and there. Actually, that's in pretty good shape. Somebody took care of that saddle. Most of them just dry rot. Okay. Uh, this room's cool to look at, but of course I don't know any of these people, so it's eh, a little less interesting than some of the others. This is more of a kind of a personal thing here, I think. Anyway, oh, we got Grandpa McMill's pocket watch. Can't see the name on it. All right, we're going to move out. Uh, Rancher's Hall of Fame is in, out here. Now, this is pretty cool. They just took some old boards and burned names into them. We're in 16. We're going to head to uh, the, the toy closet, and then we're going to go to 17, which is the last room. So where are we? Just at the bathroom? Okay. So there's a toy closet room somewhere. There it is. Literally, a toy closet. Oh my gosh, look at that. Donkey Kong by Nintendo down there. It's Commodore. Vic 20. Oh boy. Everybody who sells on eBay is drooling right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. The story of Barbar. The little. Oh my gosh. I remember, I remember that. How do you say it? I think it's Babar. Babar? It's probably right. Babar. Oh man. Yeah, I know most old, old folks watching this have had most of this stuff down here. Cracker Jack. Where's that? That's oh, yeah. New Bowser with Slinky. Slinky, Slinky. Uh, and we're supposed to have one more. Silver Creek Railroad Club. It's a library. Somebody's kitchen. The front door. Here we go. All right, now, this one is uh, brought to you by the Silver Creek Railroad Club, the last train to Maverick. And uh, I can hear a train running. This is going to be cool. Let's go see. Oh, this is huge. Wow. They're not fooling around here, guys. Well, I'm not sure. All the engines are out. Look at the detail in the woods. Doing great. You guys, first time here? First, first time. time. All right. This is called The Last Train to Maverick. Yeah, I saw that on the paper, but I didn't know what that meant.